Hello everyone. Today we're going to cover Macaulay's crypto system. Uh, our agenda for today is basic math background that I'm going to cover to understand the concept better. Then we'll move on to copper codes, which are the foundation used in Macaulay's crypto system. Then the system itself. And finally, we're going to analyze its security. So let's start with some basic math definitions. Uh, first of all, error correcting codes. Uh, these are the codes that can detect errors in some message and correct them. If you ask how, then what we do is we add some extra information to the message during the encoding stage. And during the decoding stage, some of those errors may be corrected thanks to this extra information. What is the other option is you can add some random purposeful error to the ciphertext where uh, Y like, is what we send, and it's composed of C, which is our original ciphertext, uh, add, added to E, which is our um, error term. And the purpose make the job of if stopper harder and to make sure that uh, the code cannot be easily recovered and um, modified. Next concepts are fields. Uh, so what field is? Field F is a set of elements that is closed under addition and multiplication and satisfies the following nine properties. So first of all, there should be an element A such that for all X belonging to F, X plus A equals X. And there should be an element B such that for all X uh, belonging to F, X times B should be equal X. And also there are some other properties for all X, Y, Z in uh, given Z. Uh, that are uh, need, that need to be satisfied. And these are uh, basic uh, properties that can be observed for uh, usual natural numbers. Um, then uh, there is a definition of Galois field. And this is a field where the number of elements is finite. And it's written uh, as GF of Q, where Q is the order of field or uh, the number of elements that it has. Uh, there's also a concept of extension of Galois field. So it's uh, like, say you have a prime number P with an integer K that's greater than zero. And if a Galois field is of order P power K, uh, then there's, that's an extension of Galois fields uh, of order P of degree M. And it's written as a uh, Galois field for the repeat program. Um, next is our Hamming distance concept. So what the Hamming distance is, is the distance between two code words is calculated by counting the number of bits that differ uh, between CI and CJ. And thus you get the Hamming distance. And the smallest Hamming distance between two legal code words is called the minimum Hamming distance of C. Uh, and this is the error correcting capability of a code. Mm, the other name for that. Um, then for a code word CI, you, we also have a concept of Hamming weight, and this has a number of non-zero places in CI. And since we're going to be well, mainly working with binary codes, uh, this will be a number of ones in the code word. And uh, for our error correcting purposes, we want the code words to be as far away from each uh, other as possible. And uh, now we're talking about legal code words. Uh, otherwise, just a simple error could turn one code word into another. So it'll, it would be very easy to modify the ciphertext to get another legal code word. And what, are, what is the solution for that? So usually this is done by spacing out the legal code words among legal code words. So between legal code words, you have a lot of illegal ones. And uh, therefore, you by furthering this distance, we further the Hamming distance between two local colors, and we have a higher minimum Hamming distance of C. Uh, the last concept about math is linear codes. So a linear code of dimension K and length M over a field of F is a K-dimensional subspace of vector space Fm. Uh, Fm is a set of n-dimensional vectors, and this can be referred as NK code. And if the minimum coming this minimum distance is D, then the code is NKD code. 
And then uh, we're gonna use mainly code binary codes of length n, dimension k. And this will be a set of two power k binary n tuples. Um, uh, in, other words, code, in other words, code words, uh, such that two uh, code words sum together, give another code word. Um, so this is what we're gonna use today. Uh, next concept, the next important part in our lecture is GOPA codes. Uh, what GOPA code is, this is a linear code that has error correcting capability and it can be used to encrypt and decrypt the message. Uh, so the definition is following. So first you get the GOPA polynomial defined uh, over Galois field of P power M order. That is this polynomial. As you see, here we have T terms. And the, indeed, we have a polynomial with maximum degree of T. And with each GI belonging to this Galois field. And then say we have L. This is a subset of extension field. GFPM. Uh, P is a prime number, as we said before. And say this is our L, uh, such that G of any of the elements of L is not equal to zero for all alpha i. And given the code word vector over a Galois field, we have the function R, where the denominator is a unique polynomial uh, that is equal to one mod Jx with a degree less than or equal to t minus one. Then a GOPA code is all code vector C such that uh, Gx divides this RC of X. So the RC of X equals zero mod Jx. So we get all those vectors and by combining them, we get our GOPA code. So this is what GOPA code is. Uh, how we do our encoding and decoding? This is rather simple. To encode a message, we just multiply it by the generated matrix of the GOPA code. Uh, generated matrix is usually of size k of n, uh, such that the rows of matrix are the basis of GOPA code that we discussed in the previous slide. And in order to send the message, you divide the message into k blocks, and then you multiply each block by the generated matrix g. And then the resulting vectors are a set of code words. Uh, during decoding, uh, first of all, you have to correct the error using Patterson's algorithm. I'll not uh, talk much about this algorithm, but uh, I'd like to note that this is used to uh, recover the, mess uh, the original code word without errors. And then all you have to do is solve the system of n equations with k unknowns. Uh, so here, just basic, like, uh, as I said, during encoding, you multiply uh, generate matrix by message to get C. And right now you just have unknowns and, um, and you have to solve it. Uh, now the most important macro script system. So this is a public key crypto system. It uses linear error correcting codes, originally GOPA codes, uh, and they are binary. It means that Galois field is power of two power M, order of two power M. Uh, so first, let's say, talk about how you derive the keys. So mm. let's say again, Alice and Bob want to exchange messages and Alice wants to send the message to Bob. So Bob has to publish his private or his public key. Uh, then Bob chooses arbitrary GOPA polynomial uh, with a degree of T over Galois field to power M. And then Bob computes K times N generate the matrix G of the GOPA code. After he has that matrix, he randomly chooses k times k invertible matrix S and n times n permutation matrix P, which means that P has exactly one one in every row and column with all other entries being zero. This is by definition of P in permutation matrix. Then he multiplies all these matrices together. He obtains G prime and G prime becomes his encoding matrix. Uh, so he publishes G prime and T as his public key and he keeps uh, G original, S and P to himself as private key. And uh, since it's not published, no one knows what, they, what these values are. Uh, then how the information exchange uh, happens. So after Alice has the public key of Bob, she has to generate the random binary vector E of length K, uh, such that the number of ones in that E is less than or equal to t. And since she knows t, she can easily do that. 
and then she encodes her message by dividing first into blocks and computing the y. And so she sends the y to Bob. After receiving the y, he can easily compute, uh, as you see, the last form of ms times g plus e prime. Uh, as I said before, you can uh, remove that by applying Patterson's algorithm. Uh, so after removing this, he's left by ms, and he can divide by g easily. Uh, and after he has that msg, he calculates s minus one and recovers the initial, the initial message as it is. Uh, let's go for an example to make this a bit more clear. Uh, say this is our generated matrix that Bob has, and he chooses some random uh, matrices S and P. As you may uh, see, the G is of dimension 4 by 12, so S is 4 by 4, and P is 12 by 12, as by definition. Then he multiplies these three matrices together and gets G prime, and T equals 2. Then he publishes this G prime and T. So Alice wants to send a message. Uh, Alice has her message and she computes MG prime. As you can see, she makes a random vector of weight two, which is less than, equal, less than or equal to two, which satisfies our condition. So she adds that to our Y. Uh, then she sends the encryption to Bob. And um, according to the computation we talked about before. She computes uh, y times p minus one, and she gets ms times g plus e prime. Uh, then she removes the errors using correcting codes, gets msg. And then you can just uh, row reduce g transpose, msg transpose, and get ms. Uh, this will be 1101. And just by multiplying by s inverse, so remember this was an invertible matrix, uh, you get the original message. So this is how the encryption encryption is done. And um, as you may note, this is rather a fast process, which can be still done through a computer. So one of the main advantages of the system is that it's fast uh, encryption and decryptions. Uh, now let's analyze the security of the system. So it really depends on how difficult it is to decode Y prime to obtain M prime. But we uh, assume that it's hard to separate G from G prime because you need then S and P. So neither S was published nor P was published. So you cannot do that. Uh, however, the chosen code needs to be large to hide the copper code, which is uh, within the scramble generator matrix. And uh, usually this is not very practical because using such large keys make the system inefficient and difficult to use. And the original suggestion was to use uh, 1024 by 524 copper code. But of course, there are different modifications with tweaked security levels that exist. I'm not going to talk uh, much detail about them, but uh, they exist. And um, finally, let's talk about some known attacks. So the original attack, uh, attack that was introduced by Macaulay's was uh, when you select k out of n coordinates, such that no errors affect the selected coordinates. And the probability of this is one minus t over n power k. And then you just use linear algebra to solve k equations with k unknowns. You find the original message. And the estimated running time is k power three times one minus t over n power k. So this is it. And uh, furthermore, Liam Brickley found that this k coordinates don't even need to be completely error free. There could be some small bound j of errors. And indeed, this is a general, general version of the first attack. So if j is equal to zero, we get the attack that we talked about. And if j is equal to t, so we get the brute force version. And this is uh, uh, achievable if you have this uh, j star, which is the optimal bound. There are also other attacks uh, found, but uh, I'm not going to talk about them, but it's obvious that they motivated other people to make some modifications to this system and try to tweak it, to make it more secure and less prone to attacks. 
But overall, the system was not widely adapted and it's not really popular nowadays, probably because of the fact that it's uh, prone to attacks or um, for some other reasons, but it's not. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. I uh, hope you enjoyed the lecture.